Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to the presentation of the proposal, Co-Teaching Models and English Learners. My name is Vanessa Ortiz. I'd like to thank Dr. Whitehurst, uh, our professor, for providing all the tools and the opportunity to create this proposal and to um, let us learn so much about it. Thank you for all the feedback and all the work you've done. So let's get started. So let me paint a brief picture of what it is that high school EL students go through. When they get identified uh, by their families as speaking another language at home other than English, EL students get identified and they take a test which measures their English proficiency from zero to six. If they get a zero to 2.4 on this test, they're placed in a sheltered classroom where they have a teacher that's dedicated to giving them all the tools they will need in English to pass, to be prepared for the other classes. Um, if they get a 2.5 or above, then they're placed in general education classes so that they can interact with their peers more frequently. It helps to learn language quicker. Usually the foreign credits that they bring from their schools are not convalidated. So they end up taking classes sometimes that they have already taken, which as you know, is time consuming. However, they are expected to graduate in four years, just like any other English speaking student. This causes anxiety, as you see. If you were a student, if you were 16 and you had to go to another country where you didn't know the language and you didn't know the culture, imagine if you had to pass four years of high school, SOL requirements, credit requirements to be able to graduate high school. It's, it's trying, it's very difficult. So here we can see the graduation rates for the years 2015 to 2019. The statewide graduation rate has remained stable at 91% for the last couple of years. However, the EL graduation rate has been declining for the last three years. And in 2018 to 2019, the graduation rate was 71%. If you look in further in the table towards the bottom, it gives you the rates of student dropout for all students, but the rate of student dropouts for EL students is 25%. That is critical. And it just tells us that this population is underserved and there would need to be more research. So the popularity of co-teaching has been spurred by federal and state mandates. Uh, actually also by Supreme Court decisions, that classrooms has to be, have to be inclusive and they have to have access to the general education curriculum for students with disabilities and EL students. So the work of the EL teacher is to support the EL students inside the general education classroom. And therefore it becomes a co-teaching relationship. Now, the EL teacher has to support the students in any subject, um, biology, earth science, algebra, geometry, history, English. Not all EL teachers are prepared in those areas. So sometimes the subject teacher, the general education teacher, uh, assumes that the EL teacher knows nothing of the subject and the EL position gets relegated to a teaching assistant. So that co-teaching relationship is what occurs most frequently. Um, there are exceptions, there are situations where teachers do come together and decide on a co-teaching model. And that's part of what we want to observe in the study is do those teachers that select a co-teaching model and use it, do their students have better outcomes? So this is what we pose in our study. There may be a relationship between using a co-teaching model and yield student outcomes. We will be using Pearson correlation coefficient and simple regression analysis to establish the relationship between these two variables. In 2016, Marilyn Friend and Lynn Cook developed the six co-teaching models. So let's give a brief explanation of what each of the models is. One teach, one assist is when one teacher is in front of the classroom leading the instruction, and another teacher is walking around the classroom answering questions, and distributing materials and assisting other students in general. Alternate teaching is 
one teacher keeps control and keeps the lesson for the larger group, while the other teacher takes a smaller group and provides differentiated learning according to their needs. One teach, one observe is when one teacher is leading the instruction and the other teacher is taking notes on how students perform and the things that are working or not working in the classroom for that lesson. Station teaching is when this, the class is divided into two groups and each teacher takes a part of the lesson and then they teach one part and then the students move to a second station to the other teacher and both teachers get to see the students in a smaller setting. It has great benefits um, and the students get to move around the classroom. Parallel teaching is when both teachers are at different parts of the classroom but teaching the same lesson to a smaller group of students. Team teaching is when the whole group is being taught by both teachers. So they work in tandem. They take turns to explain the material. I've seen this and it is incredible when teachers can work this way. Jane Cilio wrote in 2011 that the first step in successfully implementing a co-teaching model is establishing a good relationship by developing goals, expectations, and roles. If done correctly, according to Rivera in 2014, Co-teaching uses the strength of both teachers. It maximizes their instructional capabilities. It contributes to higher levels of student sense of belonging and self-efficacy, which are very important for their outcomes. However, there were a variety of results studied by Buddha in 1997. And all those student measures and scores suggest that what we think about co-teaching may not have an effect on secondary classes. It may not really be that relevant. Now, this study seeks to prove that there's a positive relationship between selecting and implementing that co-teaching model and students' success. If teachers can choose a model and use it, can it make a difference in student outcomes? Here we have our independent variable which is if a co-teaching model is selected or not between the two teachers and the dependent variable will be the measures of the student outcomes. Now for the 95% rate of confidence, the sample size needs to be 80 teachers from District A and 10 teachers from District B. We will send them a survey. The survey is going to ask for the information on whether they have selected a co-teaching model, which co-teaching model, it's going to include uh, parts where they can express their opinions and further background information. So the population that's going to be selected are going to be high school teachers from two different districts in Virginia. These districts are very different in terms of size and the way they operate. Um, the teachers are college level, college educated. Several have graduate degrees. Um, many of them have certifications in other subjects other than EL. And curiously, most are English speakers from the United States. Not a lot of them are bilingual. Now the procedures are here. They, I list them, there'll be an email introduction. There'll be a weekly follow-up to remind them of responding. There'll be confirmation emails of received responses. And uh, later after the study, they'll be sharing of the results with the participants. Here's a sample of the survey that we'll be sending to the teachers. These are some of the questions. On average, how often do you do the following in the school? Teach jointly as a team in the same class. And then we'll have a scale to the side, never to once a week or more. Now, these questions uh, were found on the National Center for Educational Statistics website. It is from the Department of Education and the Center for Science Education, I believe. It's a government entity that collects and researches and analyzes educational topics for the government. The link is there below, and there's also in the last slide, there's an explanation of what the center is and a link to their website as well. After they complete the first survey, they will, the intervention will be the cooperating teacher training modules from Western Oregon University. Now these modules are excellent. 
they are particularly designed for teacher candidates, but they will be sent to all the teachers in our study. Now, if they do nothing else, they should do module two. We're going to encourage them to do module two, which is co-teaching with your teacher candidate. This module explains all the benefits of co-teaching for the students, for the teacher, for the co-teachers. Um, also explains the six models of co-teaching and it has videos. Everything is bulleted. It is very clear. There are teacher interviews. It is a wonderful resource. And uh, this is the one we're going to use. So we will be using the Pearson correlation coefficient to show the relationship between the two variables. And the study will use regression analysis to allow us to see how one variable affects the other. It may not show causation as a relationship, the cause and effect relationship, but it will definitely show the relationship. The following slides have the references that we used in the literature review. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to go through them a little faster. Um, I made sure that we're, they were at a size which you could read in case any of the titles interested you or you had any more questions. Um, what we found also in our literature review is that many of the studies related to co-teaching are in the realm of students with disabilities, while many of the studies related to EL students were in the areas of immigration, demographics, immigration health, immigration studies, etc. And here is the last page, oh, one more. These last set of publications were either from a government, universities, or WETA, which is a um, TV station. Here is the information on the National Center for Education Statistics. As you can see, it is a federal agency it collects and analyzes data related to education, and the link is there below as well. It's an excellent resource for more topics in education. And I think that's the end of my presentation. I'd love to know if you have any questions or comments related to this topic, uh, to the presentation, any questions about um, further research, uh, I'd love to share. So thank you very much, everyone.